I yields back and now recognize the gentleman from Iowa, Mr. Feenstra, for five minutes of questioning. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you, Secretary Vilsack, for being here. Uh, you and I have a lot of uh, commonalities, obviously, you being our governor for many years. And uh, uh, so I just want to talk about what's happening in, in Iowa a little bit, what, I, what I'm hearing. I was in Buena Vista County, talked to 250 pork producers on Friday evening, and I'm hearing this you know, all over. And you noted it. The first question that was talked about from our chairman was Prop 12. And, and my question is, are, what, what are you hearing from our trading partners like Canada and, and other, uh, other trading partners? Uh, is the USDA concerned about trade disputes uh, through USMCA? Is this going to be a big issue because of Prop 12? Uh, Congressman, it's been raised uh, in our conversations with the Canadian uh, minister. Uh, they want to have some clarity and some indication of kind of how we're responding to this. Uh, obviously, we're in the, in the relatively early phases of all of this. Um, I will tell you that we are looking at ways in which we can pr help and assist the pork industry. We know it's under a lot of stress, as you do. Yeah. Uh, we recently purchased uh, roughly $100 million of pork products uh, in our feeding programs using the CCC and, and Section 32. Uh, the good news is we've seen a significant increase in pork exports. Yeah. Uh, but there's obviously a lot of work still to do to try to help and assist them. Yep. Um, I think we're going to go through a bumpy period here uh, where farmers have to basically make a decision uh, about whether they're going to participate in that market uh, or whether they're going to be more localized. And I think that's why one of the reasons why we focused on, it, on building a local and regional food system so that you have an option, that you don't necessarily have to participate in a, a national system, right. that you actually have the opportunity to sell directly right. to your school sell directly to an institutional yep. purchaser like yep. a university right. or a college. You've got many of them in your district. Yep, yep. And that's exactly right. I just wanted on the forefront that, you know, this Prop 12, and we have to do our work, you know, in Congress, we got to pass something to pre preempt it. Um, and you hit on something with trade. I mean, trade to me is, is when you start looking at our corn commodity, I mean, we're growing so much extra corn. Obviously, that can go to ethanol, but that gets hurt by trade. Uh, we got a lot of pork, uh, you know, going to Mexico and stuff. Um, and yet, I, I look at the administration and say we haven't had any new free trade agreements uh, in in the in, in the last three years. I mean, where where do you see? I mean, how, how can U USDA help uh, on the free trade agreements, and and how can we expand export markets? Because to me, we, we're 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 doing amazing things, growing the product, but we don't have places to go for it. And that being said, there's a lot of competition. We're seeing a lot of our competitors claiming some of the, the export markets that we used to have? Well, I'd say a couple things. Uh, first of all, one of the reasons why uh, the competition is steeper is because uh, folks in the past in our competition invested more uh, fully and completely in their infrastructure and allowed them to essentially squeeze the difference in the gap that we once had. Fortunately for us, we've got the bipartisan infrastructure law that's going to allow us to reclaim that competitive edge, number one. Number two, um, you know, the reality is uh, I have a hard time understanding the focus on trade agreements when I'm pretty confident, and maybe you, maybe I'm wrong about this, but do you believe that you can pass a trade promotion authority in this Congress? You haven't been able to pass a budget. You haven't gotten a farm bill through. Can you pass trade promotion authority? And if you can't, why not? Be and I think the reason you why not is because people have an attitude about trade that requires us to, to, to rebuild people's trust in yeah. trade. Yeah. Farmers understand it. They absolutely yeah. understand it, yeah. not the rest of the no, country. No, and it's a huge deal. I, I just look at, you know, I was in the UK. They're doing uh, individual trade agreements on ag with Kansas and other states and stuff like that. I just wish uh, our federal government was a little more engaged. Kathleen Ty, we've talked well, about it and stuff like that. We, and, and we, we are engaged, it, it, but it's not just trade agreements. It's breaking down barriers. Yeah. And I mentioned this earlier. A lot of trade wins have occurred. Don't get the headlines, but they've occurred. I, I, we've got $21 billion of trade wins in the last three years. Uh, the other issue is China. And I, I, you know, let's be honest about this. Uh, I spoke to the co-op agreement uh, entity yesterday, and I asked them, I asked them to identify their number one customer, and then I asked this question. If you started criticizing your number one customer, right. how long would you be able to yeah. have that number one customer? Good point. Hey, I got, a, I got one more question for you. When we think of uh, high path, African swine fever and foot and mouth, obviously going back to hogs, I got 17 seconds left. Do you feel confident that, that we're prepared? I mean, this, this is a, you know, keeps you, people wake up. I do. Okay. I do. 
I do. I, right. uh, I do because we have good people assur assuring it doesn't get into the country, and we have good people who are doing the research and the vaccine and all of that. Good. Uh, so, you know, we're going to have it at Manhattan, Kansas, uh, at our MBAF, and I, yep. I'm confident. Thank you. General, gentleman, it's time to expire.